Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit, I'm gonna need a lot of power, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. I've been busy crafting up Cenarium and Iridium so that I can make a lot more Ultimate Hybrid Solar Panels. Why? Because of this fusion reactor. I'll only ever need it for one thing, Helium Plasma, which will let me get the Dimension Builder. But for me, automation is either go big or go home. So, obviously, the only way is to make sure that I can run the fusion reactor multiple times. But first, allow me to stress just how unbelievably expensive this fusion reactor was. I needed 25 fusion coils. For the Labatron crystals alone, I needed 136 empowered Restonia crystal blocks and 68 empowered Payless crystal blocks. I needed almost 3,000 redstone, over half an hour of crafting beryllium cells, 84 minutes of crafting helium cells, 300 neutron reflectors costing over 1,200 tin, and 95 chrome, which was by far one of the longest crafting recipes I've ever had to wait through. Tungsten took so long that I added four extra ultimate hybrid solar panels, and I added two to speed up chrome, and that's not to mention all the transformers I have to craft and set up. That was not a process I wish to repeat. Which, incidentally, is why I'm setting up for an arc reactor, which makes getting titanium and chrome significantly faster. To power that fusion coil, I'm setting up solar panels, but to power the arc reactor and all the rather advanced rocketry machines, which actually don't take that much RF per tick, I'm going to make my first big reactor. In order to automate some crucial components, I have gone to my immersive engineering base for the first time in about a thousand years, armed with a power cell and two quantum link chambers. I'm not that interested in preserving the decorative integrity of this build, so I'm perfectly happy to desecrate it with the quantum tunneling chamber and the power cell. I can easily replace this capacitor with a power cell, because one power cell can only output 5,000 RF per tick, and an MV wire network can store 8,192 RF per tick. Connectors, however, can only accept and output 1,024 RF per tick, so I'll need some conduits to provide extra output points. I'll switch out the power cell, make a link, and link it up. The smart wrench lets me set this side to input, and this side to output. With a nasty bit of dire wire, I can't do this anymore. Now this is better. And this is way better. Just had to make sure to set the bottom side to output, which I did by setting all sides to output, and then disabling and changing the sides I didn't want. A bit roundabout, but slightly better than digging down underneath. I had to remove the old blast furnace because I need that stuff for the arc furnace. There are no odd numbers here, but it's not a problem. It is. We'll just pretend there's the same amount of blocks on both sides of this arc furnace. After all, it's an infinite world, right? You're always in the center. Please, help me. Somebody kill me now. Done. It's done. It's okay. It's done. Just need to activate it now by right-clicking the cauldron. These three energy inputs will enable me to handle six items at once at full speed, which will be way, way faster than those furnaces up there. I'll set up one quantum link chamber here with its singularity, and give it power with this energy acceptor. A quick check with the network tool tells us that the energy acceptor is working. All we need now is the second tunnel. Naturally, glowy things. Now that we have our AE network over here, we've got a lot to automate, including a metal press. And an industrial squeeze. I'll place interfaces here, 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 and here. Note that the left side is for inputs, right here, and the right side is for additives, right here. For some reason, there's no way to automatically insert graphite electrodes, which I think is dumb, but hey, let the mod author be the mod author. I'll also need import buses on all of these chests. For the sake of avoiding dye wire, this is my setup. I'll cover it up in a little bit, I just wanted to show you. See, I didn't want to desecrate it that much. Recipe 1, coke dust, which is cold coke in a crusher. Recipe 2, hop graphite dust, which is 8 coke dust in an industrial squeezer. 3, hop graphite ingots, which are hop graphite dust in a furnace. With a rod mold for the metal press, comes recipe number 4, a graphite electrode from 4 hop graphite ingots in the metal press. I changed up the system a bit. The hopper won't input multiple items directly into the metal press. In order to do a recipe with multiple items, you have to put them all into one conveyor belt first. Crafting two graphite electrodes, I can see that the whole system seems to be working perfectly. Recipe number five, one tungsten ore makes two tungsten dust in the crusher. And recipe number six, tungsten in a furnace. I'll take out the tungsten pattern from the blast furnace. And for titanium, which is recipe number seven, I'll just take it out and add it to the arc furnace. I can do the same thing for chrome. Never again will we succumb to the tyranny of long crafting times in the blast furnace, even for tungsten seal, which only costs 25 seconds. All we have to do to get this working is add graphite electrodes. Look at it go. The fusion reactor is probably going to take a lot less work to set up. I'll set it right here underneath the center. Activate the multi-block with A, and now it's set up. 
You'll know because it says yes. It's worth noting that the hologram shows the coils underneath, but this is where they're supposed to be. Considering that three of my solar arrays are now obsolete, I'm happy to take these down and use them for the fusion reactor. Considering that three of my solar arrays are now obsolete, I'm happy to take them down and use them for the fusion reactor. In my testing, the fusion reactor seems to only accept cables on the side. Now these 12 Ultimate Hybrid Solars are all outputting into the fusion reactor very quickly. I won't actually need it for a while. The Dimension Builder, after all, requires a mechanism, which I am nowhere near. So, suffice it to say that this will be obsolete for a while. And that's it for today's episode. I know I said that I do big reactors, but this episode took me long enough, and I still don't actually know big reactors yet. I doubt that it's all that hard, but still, I'd like to learn it properly. So I thought four minutes would be enough. In the next episode, I'll start big reactors and maybe advanced rocketry, but we'll see. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!